So number 15 then from the 2022 mechanics paper. It's actually a nine mark question here, but it's really quite straightforward. Maybe it's nine marks because it's now going into three dimensions which means you've got triple calculations to do, but it's still just exactly the same sort of equations of motion that you use. One difference would be you'd have to be more careful about the language you use. Speed, velocity, distance, displacement. You tend to be more lax when it's just understood that you're traveling along a straight line in one direction. So you might interchange velocity and speed. You might also sort of interchange displacement and distance. But that's a bit more awkward because displacement's quite precise. That just means the net distance from one point to another. Whereas distance could mean the total distance you've travelled or the net distance and so on. But anyway, so here, what does it say? A jet takes off from an origin with initial velocity, accelerates, so you've also got an acceleration vector. You have to find its speed after 12 minutes. So put that down then. So for part A, part 1, what have we got? I'll put the information over here. Initial velocity, 240 in the x direction, 0 in the y direction, 50 straight up in the z direction. Acceleration vector, that's 3,000 3, in the x direction, 0 in the y direction, and 80 in the vertical direction. And of course that was kilometres per hour, and that's kilometres per hour squared. And the first one was for T equals 12 minutes. So for two marks, what's the speed? Speed, not velocity. What's the speed at this time, 12 minutes after takeoff? Same equations as before. V equals U plus AT. The only difference here is they're now vectors. So V would be, so what was the initial velocity vector? 240.050. 0 in the middle, it's just in the xz plane, the vertical plane, plus t times, now 12 minutes is a fifth of an hour, times the acceleration vector 30080. Now, doing that will be a mark. Now you just got to add it up. So you can, I'll just put in the two bits. So you can have 240 plus a fifth of that is 600. And that's just zero. And that'll be 50 plus a fifth of that is 16. So there's the velocity vector then. After 12 minutes, it's going to be 840.066 kilometers per hour. Now, that doesn't actually get the mark because what you want is the speed. Now the speed is the magnitude of the velocity. So that means you'll have to do that three-dimensional Pythagoras. So that'll be the 840 squared, and with zero squared makes no difference, and 66 squared. So calculator here. So typing that in gives you 842.588 and so on. So what will I say? Speed equals 842.6 or 843. No, 2.6 kilometres per hour for a mark. <clears throat> and for part two, for another two marks, find the position of the jet at this time. Now, the position would mean its displacement, how far along, how far back, and how far up, and so on, not the net distance to it. And not left myself much room, but never learn. Spread all that out, and then when you get to the bottom, you have to crush it all up. Well, R will be just like S equals UT plus a half AT squared, only using R in three dimensions. That's like the radial vector that goes from the origin to the point. R would equal, whereas it would be UT plus a half AT squared, here it's going to be UT plus a half a vectors, t squared. So what's that? Well, t, that's a fifth. So it's a fifth of, what was it? 240.050. Now, t was a fifth squared. It. There's a 25th, so that's going to be a 50th of 30080, 
Well, you could have done a 25th of and then half the acceleration vector. So I'll just have to work across the way. And maybe I'll just keep, just put the answer down in one go. Because the first part would be for doing that, for, for substituting into that displacement equation. So what's that? So that's going to be 48 and 60 is 108. That's nice easy as that's zero. That's one and three, 1.6. And that's 10, 11.6 kilometres for that. Right, kept some of that information for part A there. Part B, the jet now maintains this speed. So that was the speed of 843 kilometres an hour, which was going off, obviously, at an angle there to the ground. But it now maintains that speed on a course that's parallel to the x-axis. So it's now flying level along the x-axis direction. So that speed will be that x component then of the velocity. So I could put that down then. So its new speed is going to be this then. It's going to be 842.600 kilometres per hour. Right? However, now that it's levelled off into steady flight, whatever they call it in aviation terms, a wind blows. So presumably it encounters a wind at that height, which was this one here, 11.6 kilometres up, some sort of crosswind, or whatever they call that meteorologically. Right, um, calculate the angle at which the jet's blown off course. And it's got the wind speed here, I'll put this down here. So this wind has got a velocity of negative 10, so it's blowing against it. Negative 50 in the y direction, so it's blowing it off course horizontally. But there's no vertical wind, so it's just going to maintain its height. Two marks. What's the angle at which the jet's blown off course? Well, the way that's going to work is it just... It's flying along quite happily there. There's its velocity. The wind is blowing in this direction. There's the wind. So there's the resultant velocity of the jet. Just call that VR. And of course, since that's the horizontal axis, this is the angle you want here. Now, you don't need to use a scaling triangle. You can just use the components of VR because that'll just be a little right angle triangle since that's the x-axis. Anyway, what's this velo resultant velocity? That'll just be V plus W. So that'll just be 842.6. I've lost the jet. Negative 10, negative 50, zero. I've lost the wind. So the resultant velocity is going to be 832.6, negative 50, zero. So what's this angle going to be? Well, I'll be using the components of this resultant velocity. The tangent of the angle will be dividing the components. I'll keep the negative 50 in because that'll give me which direction the angle's going in. Negative 50 over 832.6. Popping that into the calculator. I should have said there's a mark for getting this resultant velocity. So popping that in should give me negative something. Negative 3.436 and so on. And that's in degrees. So the angle of course will be 3 point, depends on how many decimal places you want to put down, 3.4 degrees to the right. Or, just had to quickly stop there to check if they actually used that term in flying. See, with boats you would say, instead of to the right, you'd say to starboard. I thought it was going to be fancy and say 3.4 degrees to starboard. But I couldn't find out whether or not you use that with airships, with, fl with flight or not. So I'll just say to the right. I don't know if that was actually required. I think it was just the 3.4 degrees they wanted anyway. Part 2. Calculate the horizontal component of the displacement of the jet 90 minutes after takeoff. Right, because it's obviously it'll have gone along a certain distance, back a certain distance, down in the y direction, and then up. But you only want the horizontal. Start to finish, what's the distance? You can see that. Start to finish in a straight line. Well, if you want to work out a distance, you're going to use the 
S equals VT, except there's an initial distance, but you're not going to say distance, you're going to say displacement here. So we'll be using R. That's the radial vector that goes from the origin to any point. So R. Now there was an initial position, so R will be R0, the initial position, plus whatever happened after that, that's when the wind took over. So plus, and we've got that velocity here, this resultant velocity, we're calling it VR, times the time. Now it said the time was 90 minutes after takeoff, but it took 12 minutes to get to that position. So taking away the 12 leaves you with 78 minutes. So when I put this in, hopefully this will keep working, I've got R0, I've got a note of it over here, 108011.6 plus 78 minutes, but it has to be an hour, 78.60 times VR, which is this one here. I'm going to have to be careful now because I've lost that figure. That used to be stored under an answer several stages ago. So I've only got these four figures to work with. Well, I'll just do each of those lines in one go because I've not left myself again. I don't have really enough room to put down the parts. So the first one was 1190.38, which I shouldn't really put down. So I'm not justified in having these six figures when that was that rounded off to four. So I have to be careful with what I do next. I'll just round it off again at the side. Next one's quite neat, 65. I know that's accurate. Oh, this pen's going. I'm just typing in 1.3 because that goes in 13 times and then divide by 10, 1.3. And that one doesn't need a calculation. So that is 11.6. It's just this is a bit of a pest because I'm not justified in putting all of that down. So that can just sit as an intermediate answer with those figures in it, which I'll just have to, I don't have to be careful of. Because what it's actually asking for is what's the horizontal displacement? It's going along for 1190. It's come in this way to the right, starboard, who knows, for the 65. It has gone 11.6. It was 11.6 up there, but that doesn't matter. The horizontal displacement from the start to the finish. That's the distance I want. And that is distance. The straight line distance from the start to the finish. So that horizontal distance will just be the square root of the X component. I'll just put it all in. And the Y component. The negative doesn't really make any difference, does it? I'll have to round that answer off. So popping that in gives me 1192.153. I'm just going to round that to 1192 because I only had four figures there, kilometres. Looking at the marking scheme, they've got 1192.1. So you had to have 1192.2. But then that's because I'm not justified in having these extra figures. If you'd stored that original number, whether that was accurately, then you could have used that there and then had more figures. But rounding that to four doesn't justify me, justify me in putting that down. So that's what I'll have to put down. And I should have said the three marks were, of course, by finding the final displacement by using the vector equation was a mark. Getting the components of that um, displacement is worth one. And then calculating the horizontal displacement was worth one.